Thank you, hi everyone. So we're here to talk about the latest development in fan engagement, considering immersive experiences. And to be honest, could scale and the speed of that would have been much faster as it is right now. Now it's a little bit tougher than it was before. Per, Bastian, thank you for this interesting you very much. look into the future. Thank, thank you, you very much, Alex. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Super, Per Naubert. And now we're really looking forward to seeing a bicycle goal, a fallrückzieher, or whatever it is called. We will, we will have the, the Bundesliga girls from Leverkusen and Cologne here in a couple of minutes. We heard some really interesting ideas. And uh, I think we already dipped into the topic of the afternoon. I can show you again. After the topic broadcasting in the morning, we will now go over to the topic fan experience. This is what our focus will be on the next innovation game. And it's an honor for me to present you the host for this innovation game. I will lose the name battle now, for sure. I will also lose the style battle because Alex Schluter hands over to the man with the scarf, Carlo De Marquis. about that, Alex, but thank you. Hi, everyone. So we're here to talk about the latest development in fan engagement, considering immersive experiences. And to be honest, kudos to the event organizer. Have you seen a more immersive event than this one? Look, we're inside the game, we're inside everything. So um, when you talk about mixed reality, just uh, start defining augmented reality, placing virtual objects in reality is basically enhancing the reality. Virtual reality is on the other end of the spectrum. It's replacing completely reality via virtual spaces where you can interact. I think mixed reality, if you do it well, is the best of both worlds, is in the middle, and it's super interactive. What we will see, and it's a bit of talk, but a lot of uh, show and tell and live demos, it's also different environments. So it will be the physical space, the stadium, it will be the screens with broadcast and other experiences on screen. And it will be special computing, computer on my face, I call it. Um, you also see an empty couch, and there is a reason for that, you'll see later. But let me introduce the panelists. Eric Beaumont from the famous group, a very <laughs> unassuming name, <laughs> not Eric. Um, Emmanuel Roger, immersive, so makes sense, right? <laughs> Lukas Rosanovich from the DFL, our host. Arona Mendolia from the NFL. One letter difference, the ball is a bit different, but they're doing some really cool stuff. And Ben Latkin from MLB. So uh, let's start with Eric and uh, with a very quick intro. What is the famous group and what does Eric do? Hey, my name is Eric Beaumont. I'm the VP of Advanced Technology at The Famous Group. Uh, we're a fan experience company, been doing for about 20 years, and we do in the arena sort of uh, big experience kinds of things. And what we're very famous for, excuse the pun, is our virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, mixed reality graphics and broadcast. Emmanuel? Yes, uh, hi, uh, I'm Emmanuel, co-founder and CEO of Immersive IO. So 
we are obviously are specialized in immersive experiences, and we do actually uh, leverage that technology to reinvent the way we watch sports in real time, whether as fans we're sitting in the stadium or watching from home. Aaron? Yes, uh, Aaron Mendelia from the NFL. I've been with the league for 20 years, serve as our deputy CIO, and part of what I work on is our next generation experiences both in stadium, out of stadium, for operations, for the game, and for our fans. Ben? Hey, I'm uh, Ben Ladkin. I'm uh, the managing director of uh, Major League Baseball here in Europe. So uh, I lead a team based in London uh, charged with growing the game and growing fans for baseball over here in Europe. And Lucas, I want more than an intro. So <laughs> what is DFL positioning in this mixed reality ecosystem? Sure. First of all, I'm Lucas, head of strategic cooperations at DFL. So that means basically finding together with our technology partners, finding you know, innovative solutions across our whole media value chain. Yeah, when you look at mixed reality, and I think we have some you know, ex great examples today, um, you know, we're at a very interesting tipping point in time maybe, where we'll see you know, advancements in technology, especially in devices today, and uh, I think that gives us a lot of opportunities to really recreate the fan experience and give proper value to the fan experience through mixed reality. I think uh, these advancements in technology um, have one really uh, important point. They're might just be as easy to use so they can really be adopted by the fan. We were always struggling, I think, with, especially with the device factor, but right now it's, I think we might just be at the point where, it's, as one industry partner said to me, he said, it must be as easy as drinking a cup of water in order to be adopted, and we might just be there. Let's find out today, right? So one question to the techie in the, on the stage, not in the room, on the stage, in the stadium. <laughs> oh, there are many techies here. Emmanuel. Are we kind of there with the technology and the experience, the user experience? Because we, we've been here before, uh, and then we've been here together many years ago, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we, we've been in the industry for, uh, for quite a long time already, funded in 2016, so it's been uh, yes. eight years now. Um, so we've seen uh, how it, it has evolved, and especially to what Lucas was saying, in terms of the devices, um, we see now that there is a clear acceleration of the race uh, of the, yeah, the GAFAs and the manufacturers. So we've seen uh, Apple obviously launching their Vision Pro, and that's definitely a game changer for the industry. But we had before that Meta, now Samsung will launch their own device with Google. And before that, we had plenty of other devices, uh, but we're more uh, B2B uh, focused uh, and not uh, towards uh, the consumer market. So we clearly see that now the technology is here and the market is getting some good traction. Yeah, and as I, I love anecdotes. So we did 2016 Euro together with the, the Nokia Ball, the 360 camera, and the virtual space that they built. And you may remember David Guetta doing the opening, and there was this black ball or gray ball yeah. from Nokia that cost a crazy amount of money. It was the first attempt to do in football uh, what we are trying to do in a, be in a better way today. So. Um, do we have players? Pitch is still empty, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to augment them into the game. No, uh, just yeah, kidding. Sure. Sports innovation is about uh, life games, right? It's about life yeah. innovations, and I, I think we can really see that today. So uh, I would wel uh, welcome the teams of Bayer Leverkusen and SF to Köln, and please give them a warm round of applause. Thank you for, for them to, for being here today. And I've seen them training before when it was a bit darker. They're like really strong. I was impressed. I was impressed. OK. Um, shall we go to another kind of ball? <laughs> Let's do it. So Aaron, um, you've brought us quite an interesting uh, video. Let's yeah. watch the video, and then let's talk about it also with Emmanuel. Sure. Thank you. So, can we? Okay. Can Microphone? we restart? Uh -huh. There we go. Let me yeah. Okay. Can, so can we restart the video, maybe, yeah, please? Yeah. We'll restart it now that we have some voice. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Maybe not. So the video you're going to watch as soon as they replay yeah, it again for you is from Super Bowl this year. Um, I think one of the foundational things that's very important to us, you've all been demonstrating these experiences, Manuel said, about six years now. But everything has to come together to make experience like this work at a density of 50 to 70,000 fans in the stadium. And of course, the foundation is connectivity, what we've done with 5G connectivity and wireless connectivity for our fans at that density, and then layering in the cloud and the latency of real time. So working with Manuel to be able to deliver something that overlays on our players and gives statistics and tracking in near real time and perception to the fan holding their phone to the field. So a lot of pieces have come together over these years to make an experience like this possible in stadium. And I think it's very important to us. It's accessible to all fans. It is authentic. It actually enhances the game and doesn't detract your attention away from the game as a companion to the game. And that this experience is repeatable. As the NFL expands here in Germany, we've played now in Frankfurt and Munich. We're playing this year in Brazil for the yep. first time. These experiences have to be portable and go where we go. Um, and powering this is both a hybrid data stream. So we have sensor data from the NGS system, as well as optical tracking data from our ring of cameras that Hawkeye provided that game, reproducing that virtual replay with the limb tracking. Yeah, because it's, it's an experience we designed many years ago. But first, they, they would tell you, oh, there's no Wi-Fi in the stadium. Correct. Second, yeah. they would tell you, oh, but the latency is too long. So again, Emmanuel, sorry to push the pressure on you. <laughs> now the tech is ready, lattice is there. How, how, is it, how was it possible, this one? Yeah, you're right. Connectivity is there. New data feeds are, are there. So all of that enable new type of uh, experiences. And so for that specific case uh, with the NFL, we saw, hey, how can we augment specifically uh, the in-venue experience? And so we got in inspired by uh, the Prime Vision uh, video feed of Amazon. And the idea was, hey, can we bring those overlays real time for the fans in the venue so that just by pointing the phone at the peach, they get more about uh, what's happening on the game. And also with American football, there's a lot of breaks in between plays. And so with 3D tracking data, yeah. we're able to put the fan in control. And so after each play, they can review the play yeah. in 3D and get more advanced analytics. And yeah, this is uh, what And I think in, uh, as my English wife would say, the proof is in the padding. You will need to understand with the data analytics how many will use their phone in this way, how long. So I think yeah. this is the next phase, no? You launch it, and then you measure it, and then you understand. Yes, and I think it starts with this experience, but you could see it in other form factors, potentially in like our high-end VIP suites. Yeah. Perhaps it's a touch TV experience. Yeah. Uh, as more augmented reality comes to wearables and devices we have, we're building the foundation for that experience. So there are multiple ways to carry out this type of execution yeah. for us. So um, a bit of a different experience, <coughs> Ben. Uh, if we can show the, the MLB video now. Uh, not really the stadium, because you're in London, so that was difficult. So you try to recreate with mixed reality something. Let's see the video from the MLB, please. Let's go to work, baby! <laughs> That looked really cool. Uh, what was it exactly? Screen, but real? Yeah, so, so what we did there is, um, for those who don't know, we, uh, the sort of tentpole moment for Major League Baseball in Europe is the London series. So yeah. we had the Cubs and Cardinals over last year. We've got the Mets and Phillies coming, coming this year. And that's in London Stadium over in the east of, east of London. Now, what we try and do is also have this event in Trafalgar Square that's both for our existing fans who come over, so they can, a sort of fan festival, but also for new fans to come and just experience and get a taster of a, of, a, of a sport. Trafalgar Square is quite a tricky space to activate. It's absolutely brilliant to do activations in because it's right in the center of London. It's iconic. You've got Nelson's Column. It's a brilliant, brilliant venue. However, space-wise, it's quite difficult to, yeah. to sort of operate in. So what we did uh, last year, and what we're also going to do this year again, is we put um, a large batting cage right in the middle of a, of, of a, of a square. And we have uh, 
real pitcher in there, throwing real balls, someone hitting with a real bat, you hear the thwack of the ball, all of that. But uh, it then, uh, the ball tracking then kicks in, and on the screens you see where the ball would have gone in Trafalgar Square. So um, you then gamify that moment. So it's like playing our home run derby game on the mobile or on, on so the show. there's no more mixed reality than that. No, exactly. You hit the ball and you see it on the screen. And rather than just doing home runs where you have points, you, yeah. we can create a whole game. We can gamify that whole, whole area. So um, what we then did with it is um, we kind of programmed it across the, across the weekend for two real uh, things. So we had, on the Friday night, we had a home run derby competition uh, where we had legends, we had uh, sort of female superstars, we had uh, European talent, all form four teams, and we had a home run derby hitting competition, so who could get the most, most points. Our sort of big, all of our fans were there on the Friday night to watch that as the start of the weekend, so, so that's mostly what you, you saw yeah, there. Yeah. We then had different people from different sports come in and play it across the weekend, so we had some basketball players, some rugby players, some soccer players come in, and yeah. I shouldn't use the word soccer, cool. should I? And, and Lucas, what is your approach with this kind of physical mixed reality experience for the DFL? I mean, uh, you talked about the in-stadium case at the Super Bowl, and we did something similar back in 2020 with Vodafone, with Immersive together. We saw it, I think, at Sports Innovation 2022 as well. And when it comes to in-stadium experiences, it's a little bit crunchy, right? Because you don't want to incentivize uh, fans to look at the phones for 90 minutes. At the same time, we see year over year a 60% um, 60 increase of data usage in sports venues. So basically, that tells you there is a demand. I think we just have to find the right use cases. And for us, the use case uh, in 2020, 2021 was really good but it didn't go to market. But maybe now the technology is, is further advanced with better connectivity, we have just more use cases to show better data on it. And I think uh, your example basically shows that there is a lot of potential for it. OK, so let's switch a bit subject. Let's go to Eric on the other end. Sure. The tall guy, ex basketball <laughs> player for, for no, sorry. Um, this is a, a video where you will guide us through, because there are a lot of experiences. Sure. We're going to screens, we're going to broadcast. So please show the famous group video. Sure, so this is just a couple of the kinds of things we do, an example of our mixed reality portion of the business. And you'll see that there's a lot of different directions, but mostly what it's about is enhancing a broadcast and creating a really interesting moment or storytelling. It's really about the story. And you can see whether it's an in-stadium activation or something like we did for MTV, um, something for the NHL and Chipotle, it's a mixture of brands, it's a mixture of storytelling, and it's that really impressive creative that sort of grabs attention. And most will have seen the Panther, that's sort of one of the first uh, really ones that went viral, went around a lot, people saw that. Um, and you'll notice that some of these are much more brand focused, like for the team themselves or for the <coughs> league. Some are big events, like the 75th anniversary of NASCAR. Um, other ones are completely in the other direction where it's a sponsored moment, that where it's really a brand communicating their sponsorship or whatever it is. This is a great one where we got to drop, drop uh, millions of gallons of slime all over an NFL field. Um, NFL 100. That was, yeah, Super Bowl, and then we did the NFL 100. Yeah. Um, so a lot of different incentives, and they can have very different styles and very different effects depending on what you're trying to achieve. But it's all that sort of broadcast moment. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I love the NFL 100. We worked with 15 people from the NFL in Torino, yep. and that thing you saw was invented together in Torino. Mm. So I have yeah. a bit of pride for that. Yeah, that was a uh, good But show. I think we are going live now. Sure. Because, I mean, Something there's nothing scary like... scary will happen now. Yeah, right. right? Something scary. So, um, yeah, if we can switch to our video feed. There we go. So we thought, okay. why not bring it along and actually show? And I, I have to apologize oh. to the hey. um, <laughs> players on the field. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Oh, well. Uh, no players were harmed in the making of this mixed reality. Um, so we decided to just bring the Panther along. Obviously, Panther was built for the uh, Bank of America Stadium, but it works here. That's mixed reality. What's actually interesting about what we're doing today is we have a completely new technology that we're bringing for the first time. We're actually showcasing, this is the premiere, world premiere of our new tech for uh, a camera system. We're using two tiny static cameras that do not move. And they're up there, just and that's two very small. These are actually our cameras right there that we bring. And we can actually create complete mixed reality, movable cameras. We can even do all sorts of really nice things. Yep, there we go. So right now, actually, my colleague is up there with a, an Xbox controller moving the camera. We could have remote sticks. We could have animated camera. Hi, CJ, thanks. Um, we also <laughs> have, and he can also control the Panther itself. 
right? So one of the whole things that we're working on, we can actually do complete 3D moves in space. You'll see that we haven't uh, have the, yeah, exactly, the players are there. They're getting a little bit squashed, sorry. And he can think. Now, for the Panthers, is really interesting. This is a game engine. We're using Unreal Engine for all of this. That's a game engine. Why not make this bi-directional? Why not make this a little bit more interactive? There's no reason. So the Panthers actually have a version of this where they can control the Panther with a, an Xbox controller, record moves, and then they can say, OK, hey, let's have um, a player. Let's have one of our best players create a Panther moment. Let's have some of our audience, or like a fan, a super fan, create a moment, record that, play it back, and create a idea of participation. Make it bi-directional. Make it a conversation rather than just a consumption. And I, I think, Aaron, yeah. there was a lot of that that was NFL base, I have to say, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think the NFL, as often, the NBA does too, <laughs> and the MLB does too, <laughs> embrace yeah. these things you know, before they can do a lot of tests. What is your approach at the NFL with these kinds yeah, of things? And talking about this type of experience, I know we're here to talk about technology, but this is really about the mood and the spirit within the yeah, stadium. 100%. And this is, an, this is an advantage and an opportunity to redirect that mood, right? We, we use sound cues, we do visuals, but this visual is impactful, and it really does direct the audience's attention and channel energy. And that's the purpose of it, not to show off technology, but to channel energy around the game and the event. Yeah, and uh, I have to say, this is a lot about the creativity and the experience and the emotion. Yeah. On the other hand, my, if you want sports data, part of brain says, yeah, we can use it with statistics. One thing that I think we as an industry still have to improve is very often there are these amazing animation mm -hmm. and then the, the core stat is a black window <laughs> and I've seen it in, in US uh, sports, uh, sorry. <laughs> with three numbers. Oh, come on, use it to mix the creativity and the data and tell a, a, a better story, I would say. Yeah, I, I, I know the, the kids love Nickelodeon, I have kids, so yeah, yeah. that was an amazing one. So, um, and can we get the panther go away because I'm a bit scared every time. <laughs> <laughs> the noise scares me. Um, let me walk a bit. So, clearly someone, Jad, joined us oh, on stage on the couch. She's not just there relaxing, she has something to tell us. And Lucas, um, I know you work a lot with Emmanuel on, on this new computer on my face thing. Tell us where you are, what you're doing, which is really what everybody's curious about, I guess, right? Absolutely. Uh, so are we, I think, right? I mean, kind of expecting to see that live. Um, so we've been working with Immersive uh, uh, quite a while, and in 2021, 2022, we did already uh, AR tests with, with glasses, uh, seeing how that can enhance the, the football viewing experience. And in general, the perception of it was really good. So we, we did focus group tests. They all said they loved the experience in general. There was always one thing a little bit lacking, and that was always the quality and the usability of the devices itself. So obviously, we have a new device on stage today. And um, I mean, everybody should try it out for themselves. But I, th I think as soon as you try it on, you understand that it's a different story that we're talking about. It's a different level of UI, UX. And as I said in the beginning, this j just might be the, you know, the tipping point where it's easy enough for fans. So a, you know, immersive experience through Apple Vision Pro or any other device, really, because we I truly believe this can also transform the market itself, where, where this can really be adopted. So, um, I mean, Emmanuel, maybe you want to say something on the technology part of it. No, um, I, I want to ask a question. It, she's a real person, right? Yeah. Okay. She's I'm not sure all the times, but mostly <laughs> she is, yeah. So, no. let's see what's going on inside that uh, thing. Oh, wow. You want to explain? So, uh -oh. let me just can you pull up. I think. Is this a live feed from Apple TV? No, it's not. OK. We're, OK. So this is a live show, right? So we were expecting to see that live coming from Apple TV. So this is pre-recorded, as you can see. But Judd, anyways, guide us through the experience. Show us what you can do in an Apple Vision Pro. Sorry, trying to connect. <laughs> but you, you cannot see that at, at the moment, right? So but maybe, Manuel, you can explain. No, they can switch. OK, you switched. You're back on. Should be. OK, anyway, while yeah. waiting, uh, yeah. so what we're going to see <laughs> is uh, see her now. Yeah, the okay. ultimate experience you can expect while watching your game at home, so uh, with the Vision Pro headset. And basically, what's awesome with this uh, mixed reality asset is that you can customize your environment and do your perfect setup to be in the best conditions to, to watch the game. So 
um, yeah, whether we have it live or <laughs> whether we, uh, we have it on video, we will demonstrate this. I saw the okay. screen in the bottom end. But that's the beauty. So right now we can see Jad, we can see your okay. feet on the on the big big screen. Okay. So if you can open the uh, if if you can open the live feed, that would be great. Otherwise, we just switch to the video. Okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I know you are all seeing what I'm seeing. So I'm going to try to move very slow so you don't all get too sick. Okay. So now you need to imagine I'm at home sitting on this couch and watching this live game here. The first thing you need to know is that I'm um, watching with my eyes and interacting with my hands. So I can make this video as big as I want and place it anywhere in my environment, like this. So now, if I want to get more to, out of this game, and really create my own personalized setup, I can open this additional window. And here you can already see the key events that happen in the game just behind us. But I also have access to these additional feeds to complete my overview. So here. Now, these are just four examples. But you could imagine uh, in the future that we create new feeds uh, created specifically for this kind of experience. And maybe, Lucas, you want to yeah. comment on this? Yeah, why not? I mean, uh, you know, this is already quite impressive, but why don't we immerse ourselves completely in the experience and why don't we switch to the stadium view? Sure. So here, in just one tap, I can decide to teleport Whoa. myself. So we're in Dusseldorf, right? But just in another, yeah. in another view. That's another camera. That's another. This is basically pre-recorded. And uh, I think what this shows you is you have the opportunity to just personalize your viewing experience completely to your, to your liking. And what's pre-recorded, though? Yeah. Just to clarify, what's pre-recorded is just the picture, right? Yeah. The rest yeah. is live. The rest <laughs> is live. <laughs> and so we have also the pitch. Yeah. Here. Now, as a fan, I always want to have the best understanding of the game and all the actions that are happening. So for this, I also have this 3D tactical view that I can bring in any time here. And now I'm going to stand to show you what we have here. So what you're seeing here is the live skeletal data of all the players and the ball, which is perfectly synced with the, the game that uh, is happening right now. And now I can really get closer. And we're not stopping here. So we are adding what you can see here, uh, live insights right on top of the action. So you have the name of the player with the ball. You can have also her passes possibilities. It can be distance to the goal, things like this. And these are very simple. But you can imagine in the future with the evolution of data and AI that we can bring a lot more advanced insights with like predictive insights, for example. So maybe um, just to give a little bit of more insights and background on the, on the product itself. And uh, I think uh, right now you see it on a screen. Obviously, it's a different, very different experience if you wear it yourself. But just having this live is very impressive for itself. But from a league perspective and a rights holder perspective, I think for us, it's just incredible that we can put basically each step of our media value chain into one product. So as, just, as, as Judd pointed out in the beginning, we have the broadcast feed itself. We don't just have one broadcast feed here in high quality, of course, and highest quality. We also have additional feeds. These are right now, I think, four additional feeds right now. You can basically you know, scale that up to, up to you know, I don't know, 20 different, different feeds that would be possible. Uh, in, addition, I think I'm, yeah. in addition, I think uh, that's, that opens a lot of room for innovation in the you know, camera perspectives. Different views speci uh, specifically designed for an immersive view like that. 8K options. I think that's all possible and opens up uh, room for innovation. Then looking at the pitch, we have Gen 6 tracking data coming in live 
being represented live in a quality. If you wear it, you can see the players in such a good detail. It's very impressive. Also, thanks to our friends from Track up there for pulling it together, together with Immersive. Really impressive. And uh, so I'm doing a promotion for the panel tomorrow, very early at 10. We will show the limb tracking in very detail, which is what is powering this one with Hendrik and Christian and the team there. And, and that's not it, yeah, right? I mean, we have uh, data, we have all Bundesliga match facts powered by AWS. We have in there that are produced by AWS together with Sportex Solutions. We have uh, the photo itself produced by a content powerhouse, DFL Digital uh, Sports. So basically, every single step of the media value chain into one immersive product. And let's see, I mean, it's a test case for now. So let's see where, uh, what the fans say about it. Let's do some tests around it, and let's see if this can be you know, if the, if the, mar if the market uh, um, responds uh, to it, then, you know, let's see if it can be a product in the future. So just summarizing, I'm in this, uh, um, I can say, mixed uh, reality space. I can see the background, my, my room or wherever I am, or I can see one of the images or videos that I can put as a background. I have different videos options, so like multi-camera, we would say in a normal uh, two-dimensional space. But then we also have any statistics, anything that you can create in terms of content that is all synchronized. And then we have the virtual pitch, correct, at the moment. Right. Clearly, um, you need to find a way, once you study how the user are starting to utilize it, if there is like uh, maybe a setup for, I don't know, betting people for fantasy, for the deep statistics, for the one that want to be immersed, maybe the audio is different. So I think. It's the start of something, in, in my view. I don't know, uh, Emmanuel. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Uh, and that's the beauty of uh, mixed reality is that you can put all the information you want in your field of vision and you customize it. So whether you're interested in betting or if you just uh, want to see the game, you just put the, the interfaces and the content you want to look at during the game. So this is actually, I mean, our vision of the future of watching sports. and. For me, what's really groundbreaking is what we're able to do with 3D skeleton or skeletal data, mm. uh, which is that 3D reproduction of the game real time. And I mean, here you see the video, but once you have the headset on and you try it for yourself. Yeah, because it's, the, the pitch seems a bit far. It so. isn't in the, in the glasses, and we yeah. can always zoom in or uh, yeah. go next to it. But it's a new type of content we've never seen before. It's Imagine yourself in a stadium, but as if you were the spider cam, kind yeah, of. So you're exactly. on the top, and you have the best view ever that you can have to watch the game. And I'm a football fan, and it's the best way I imagine we can watch football in the future and other sports. And I believe this is the first step. I mean, with 3D, and it's here, 3D recreation, but could be also volumetric video. And in the future, we'll be watching content and sports yeah, in particular. One question in 3D. that I've been asked already is, is this not a bit lonely on one end? <laughs> in so the end, in the end if I you have more people, well, you see two people on the couch with the same thing. So there is still, but yes, I mean, it seems a great experience. To be honest, very often there is a meet of, oh, like being at the venue. I mean, I, I started working in Formula One 10,000 years ago. You go to Formula One, it's not, you don't see anything. <laughs> so it's not really a great experience. The stadium is an amazing experience. Very often I can't see exactly what is going on if I'm sitting there. So. I think this is a, a, a very a good start of something that could create a different experience. I totally agree on that. Any views from the NFL or the NLB, to be honest, on this? I can imagine. Yeah, and I think not just the fan experiences, but the opportunities operationally for us to train officials uh, to use for other game management use cases. This is pretty powerful as well. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a fan engagement tool, and just sort of from my view, looking internationally, how can we just create these different experiences for different levels of fans to kind of connect that baseball is a very social game so if we can add that sort of social layer so you're sitting there in england or italy or germany with fans of the same team yeah. watching at 1 a.m in the morning that starts to have a real appeal as well and, and actually, actually i i saw what's uh, a little bit because in germany you can't watch it but i saw a little bit of the experience that you can watch the mlb in and the the perspectives of the camera in apple tv are just Pretty impressive, so uh, definitely a new way of engaging with, with the sport, I'm sure. But in the end, I ju just want to make sure the fan decides, right? The fan decides if it's you know yeah. too lonely or not, if you know if they want that experience or not. We cannot, as as leagues or as technology providers, we can't overwhelm the fans with technology. Yeah. They need to be the ones deciding if this is going to be adopted or not. And 
So let's move subject another, the last time and uh, talk about virtual. Obviously, if you think about Roblox, Fortnite, gaming, with or without something on your face. Thank you, Jad, by the way. Um, that's something where there was a lot of uh, development been in the last years. And I have an example from the MLB, uh, which is the virtual ballpark. Correct, Ben? Yes, that's right. Can we show the video, please? from the MLB, the last one. Greetings everyone, hello, and welcome to the 2023 All-Star Celebrity Softball Game. It is such a great honor to be here on day one of the MLB Virtual Ballpark Project. Everything you do here earns you points. Among the many activities, quiz stations, the so rare collectible cards, a special commemorative digital ticket. We're gonna make some super team emotes with your team logos. It's only a matter of time before I think that the chants are gonna start beginning. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, here we go. Let's go into the virtual ballpark. Welcome to the watch party. Today's two squads, Team Finch versus Team Felix. Now that could be an epic showdown. What's going to be next, right? This is so cool because this is the future, right? The technology you guys have in the Major League Baseball stadiums is like insane. In the virtual car park, they're able to have the same experience as if they were truly here and they're able to get to watch you go up there and slap. Right to Natasha Buckley and that will retire the side. Unreal, unreal. This is awesome. It looks incredible. Thank you fans for all joining in on the virtual ballpark here at T-Mobile Ballpark. It's been so much fun. Look forward to see you guys next year. That, that looks cool. It's virtual with real people inside. So it's the opposite, right? No, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> it, it, this was uh, accessible through any sort of just computer, tablet, or mobile. Um, it wasn't, you didn't need the goggles to, to use it. And really, it's just a pilot to try and test Again, going back to that sort of point around, it's not the technology that works, it's the sort of fan engagement that works. And I think with baseball, we've got a unique sort of uh, experience in that baseball is a very social game. It's a, very, yeah. it's a game where you can add these layers. So being able to put those quizzes in, being able to put the sort of treasure hunts in around that sort of gamification around actually watching that game was a really good sort of experiment to see, okay, does this appeal to new audiences? Can we get people doing stuff around the game as well as uh, watching it? And then, yeah. as we say, from an international point of view, there's these opportunities to sort of meet people and chat and things like that. So we're bringing, again, disparate groups together to uh, experience watching yeah. the, the ball game, which is what everyone wanted to do. Yeah, and I know, Aaron, you yeah. also did a lot around that kind of virtual experiences with, uh, with the NFL, right? Yeah, correct. And uh, this past year, uh, we did an alternate broadcast with Disney and ESPN for Toy Story. And that actually used our limb tracking plus the Zebra NGS data coming through Amazon AWS to recreate a live low latency experience within the Toy Story world. And I think one thing that's an important value proposition to all of us who have to manage technology is that these systems work together to produce multiple streams of value, and we are not managing separate systems to do the broadcast, uh, to do the fan experience, and in-stadium, and out-of-stadium, and to also operate and officiate the game. So we're going to show some of those tomorrow when we do our live game. But the systems you are seeing are powering both the fan experiences, the, broad ex the broadcast experiences, and the officiating operational. So for all technologists, that's really important, that we're not creating a complexity for ourselves and a lot of risk. No, for sure. The more we think about what we saw now and what is happening in a normal NFL game, if you just add layers, yeah. it's like with the tracking. If you add, 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 it becomes unmanageable at a certain point at the scale that the NFL needs or the MLB needs to do or right. football needs to do. And it's an opportunity also to fund these systems. If you want to use them operationally, that's a very high cost and burden, especially yeah. moving this system around with you as you play games in different places potentially. So you want to recoup that cost through these fan experiences and revenue opportunities. So it, you have more opportunities down the stream to use it for so many different experiences. Definitely. That's fascinating. So thank you for listening until now or watching the game. I don't know what you were doing, to be honest, in the audience. But uh, let's end with maybe a philo no, so not a philosophical, but I, I mean, after all we have seen. Sure. Let's go philosophical. Yeah. So OK, I mean, I think. The one thing that we shouldn't forget for all of the technology that there is that the reason for sports is really community, right? Sports is fandom, it's a sense of belonging, a sense of ownership, a sense of participation. And I think 
all of these technologies, that supports that. That's what we need to be doing. And the storytelling and the immersiveness, that needs to create that. And we often, we see the technology and it's wow, but it's all in support of that fandom. And I think that's really the most important thing to keep in mind from us. Emmanuel? Yeah, I would say mixed reality is a tool for us to reconcile the digital world and the physical space. So with this, we're able to put information in context. And uh, while well, we're uh, allowing the fans to better understand what's happening during the game, and it's uh, for me, yeah. Yeah, meet your fans where they are and where they want to be. Don't force them into places because they won't go. <laughs> <laughs> ben? I uh, completely echo that. And just, there's no one solution here. Different fans will want different things. And I think that's the, that's the reality that we all have to try and manage is, let's see if we can meet as many of those expectations as possible. And the, t the tech is there to just help us to do that. Lucas. Well, I think we've traveled through different levels of immersion in this panel. So we've traveled from in-stadium and mixed reality to broadcast mixed reality to Vision Pro glasses, devices, mixed reality. And we, we ended in a complete virtual world. Uh, and I think in every single step of that, there is a use case for mixed reality. But in the end, I just agree with everybody else, because it's, it's going to be the fan deciding. It's got not going to be the technology deciding. Uh, but there are use cases out there. I think the technology is at that point where it can provide uh, that additional value through stats to you know, new fan experience through creativity. I mean, look at the Panther. And, uh, and I think right now it's, at a, it's a great time to innovate. It's a great time to be at Sports Innovation and check it out for yourself. And uh, I look forward to what's, what's next with Mixed Reality. Yeah, and absolutely. And by the way, very often we ask, OK, is it not tiring to be? You see that Jad is still working on it. So <laughs> it's not like impossible to keep She's it. She's doing emails. Now. Ah, OK. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I read something this morning uh, that is very uh, to the point uh, here that says technologies challenges our human values, especially with AI, but everything we've seen then. And I think questioning our human values when we apply technologies and making sure that technologies, data people, and creative people work together, I think that's the best uh, outcome, I think. So thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening for such a long time. Mm -hmm.